so our tray cover thingy broke. And at first I tried just crazy gluing it back together, but to install it, you actually have to squeeze the sides in so it can snap into these little tabs and it just snapped off again. So that's not gonna work. But you know what that means, right? Yep, we're going to design and 3D print a replacement part. Now, let's talk about design a little bit and design intention. So in tackling a project like this, you may be tempted to grab your pair of calipers and just recreate the part, just start measuring and, and recreate uh, pretty much a clone copy of this. But in doing so, you may end up uh, creating features that may not have anything to do with the actual functionality of the part, but may just have to do with the manufacturing process. Um, each manufacturing process has a way that it has to tackle a design. I mean, you know, like for example, 3D printing, where you have to orient it a certain way or try to prevent supports and overhangs. Um, so in that case, I would sort of back away from just trying to recreate this part, but actually visit or revisit how you need the part to actually work and function. It could also be that you're not using the part how it was intended to be used, so you may not need certain features. And since you're designing it from scratch anyway, you might as well design it how you are going to use it. And I'd recommend just keeping it as simple as possible. Here's the shelf we're working with and you can see the broken cover here. It has a little uh, slot here that will slide right into those tabs. Now right off the bat there's two design decisions I'm going to make. You can see that the cover is clear, you can see right through it. Now with 3D printing filament, even the transparent stuff, you, you can't really see through it. So I'm not really going to worry about making it clear, it's just not going to work. And I don't really need that feature anyway. The second is notice how it covers the entire shelf from the bottom to the top. Uh, that's something I'm really not going to worry about because the way we tend to use this particular shelf is we're storing uh, basically like one onion and some garlic in here. And the onion has its own little container that keeps it sealed and fresh. And the garlic, it, it's in a bag. And the way you use garlic anyway, you, you know, you use a clove at a time. You're not putting half a clove back in the fridge. So there's no real need need to keep everything kind of sealed and that was going to work that great anyway because it's not really airtight. So the only concern really I'm going to worry about is when you open the fridge that these don't fly out and there's a little sort of lip on the bottom but it's not enough and I want to keep them from you know falling off into the floor. So the cover I'm going to design is really going to serve as just a bumper um, to prevent so if you open the fridge really fast the, the stuff will slide forward and it'll just hit it and then you can you know be able to easily move it up and down or get it out the way. And so that's going to be its purpose so let's design around that. Okay, we'll begin by creating a sketch on this ZX plane here. And I'm gonna start uh, by creating a line. So under create line, and I'm gonna start at the origin and go straight across. I'm gonna give this a distance of 100 millimeters. So I'll type that in, hit enter. And then I'm gonna come in with another line. So L for line, start at the origin. This time I'm gonna come in at an angle. And at this point, I'm just gonna place it anywhere and in D for dimension, and I'm gonna dimension this line here, and I'm also gonna make it 100 millimeters, and hit enter. And then I'm gonna create an arc, so I'm gonna to go to create, down to arc. I'm gonna go with my center point arc. Start at the origin, and so the way, actually, let me redo that. The way the arc tool works, this center point arc, is I'm gonna, you click where you want your center point to be and where you want your arc to start and then where you want your arc to end, and there it goes. D for dimension, and I'm also gonna make this 100 millimeters and hit enter. Okay, here's a, I'm gonna show you a quick little tip here on how to, Create your sketches in a way that allowed them, uh, that were in a way that allows you to come back and make changes and allowing your changes to not break your model. So let's say, for example, I want to come back and I decide, which I actually end up doing, uh, but let's say I want to make this a different dimension. Like I realize 100 is too small, we're going to make it 150. If I go ahead and type 150, hit enter, notice how things don't really work out. This line is 150, but this stays 100 and that arc is still a 100 millimeter radius. Um, so when I come back to make that change, everything's just gonna break on me. So here's how I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna undo 
and instead of making this 100 millimeters, I'm going to double click to edit and I'm going to link it back to this original dimension here. So I'm just going to click on it. Notice how it says D1. I'll hit enter and I'm going to double click on this radius and also click on this dimension and that's going to say D1. So this line and this line and this radius are all linked. So now if I change this to 150, hit enter. Notice how it doesn't break my sketch. Everything is exactly how I want it to be uh, related and how I want things to change and update. So really quick tip there, but very useful when you start creating your designs to think about it in this way, in a way that when you come back and make a change, things don't break, the relationships will hold. Okay, I'm gonna change that back to 100 and we'll continue. So at this point, I'll just click finish sketch and I'm gonna extrude this, uh, the distance I want it to be. And in this case, we measured 213.5. So create down to extrude, select it, and let's go to, whoops, 213.5 and hit enter. And okay, so we have this sort of cheese wedge here. And next I'm gonna fill it this edge here. I don't want it to come to such a sharp point. So F for fill it, select it. And let's go with a three millimeter fillet, click okay. All right, now we're going to shell this. So we'll go to modify down to shell. I'm gonna select this top surface here, but notice that the bottom blue also highlights. So it's gonna shell this entire um, surface here. I'm going to go with a one millimeter fillet simply because I just want a quick print just to test this out uh, and quickly make changes that I know are going to be needed and then come back and uh, uh, come, you know, hopefully my final iteration or my next iteration, I should say. All right. So I'm going to go with a one millimeter shell here. Click OK. And that gives me this part here that's shelled out and next i'm going to have to create the holes that are going to snap into the tabs so i'm going to create a sketch on this surface here and i'm going to approach this by creating a line first so l4 line i'm going to reference a little midpoint triangle here that's going to give me that center of that arc and then i'm also going to find that um, triangle here again that gives me the center of that arc click uh, to place it and then let's uh, hit escape and i'm going to take this line and make it a construction line by hitting x and I'm going to put in a circle. So C for a circle. And I want this circle to be 10 millimeters in diameter. And I'm going to just simply drag it in place and it's going to snap to that line. And now it's constrained to this uh, construction line that I made. And next we're going to go ahead and dimension it. So D for dimension and I'll dimension that center of that circle um, to this uh, point here on my construction line. And we're going to give that a distance of 80 millimeters and hit enter. Okay, so now we have that distance from that edge, stop sketch or finish sketch here. And then I'm simply gonna extrude this through. So select it, E for extrude, start dragging it in. And for my distance, I'm gonna go with all and then click okay. And you notice how it's gonna go to right to the next edge. It'll go straight through my part. Okay, so now I have this part and final thing, I'll just fill it these uh, corners here to give it a little more strength. So F for fill it. I'm going to select those two inside corners here. And then we'll also select the outside edges as well. Uh, three millimeter fill it again. Click OK. And there's our part. Let's 3D print this and give it a quick test and see how it fits. I printed this on my Prusa i3 Mark to 3D printer. I simply used Prusa's fast print settings at 0.35 millimeter layer height here and went with PLA. I'm using the Jesse PLA from Printed Solid. And as I try this out, I can see that it's just way too flexible, which I anticipated making it so thin. But the first feedback I'm getting is it, it's just not long enough. It's not providing pressure here on both sides of the tabs to hold it in place. So I'm gonna have to increase that length by a few millimeters. I can also see here if I go from a top view that it just extends out a little too much. So I'm going to bring it in. I'm just going to eyeball it here really like five millimeters. So let's make those changes and then we'll try it again. So the first thing we'll do is we want to make this a little bit longer so that it can actually stay in the tabs and provide pressure on both ends to be able to uh, hold in place. 
So to do that, we're going to go to our extrude feature here in our timeline. I'm going to simply right click and edit. And if you remember, we gave that a distance of 213.5. I remeasured. This time I went back and measured the shelf instead of measuring the cover. And I got 216 millimeters. So we'll go ahead and change this to 216 and click OK. OK, next was the uh, distance here, um, the width. I wanted to bring that in a bit. Just sort of by eyeballing it, I can tell that it needs to come in about five millimeters. So that's what I'm gonna do. And to edit that, we're gonna go to this sketch here on our timeline. So I'll right click there, go to edit sketch. And I'm just gonna change this distance here from the center of that diameter to this edge here. I'm gonna change that from 80 to 75. So just bring that in five millimeters. And what that's going to do is actually, if you saw, it moved the circle up a little bit. And by moving that circle up, everything gets moved back. So uh, that's all I need to do there. I'm going to click Finish Sketch. And finally, we need to make this a bit thicker. It's just too thin and too flexible. It's unable to hold its shape right now, um, which, you know, I, I kind of knew that going in. So uh, this is something I knew I was going to have to do. But let's go ahead and thicken it. And there's a few different ways we can go about this. We can actually go to Modify, Press, Pull and then select this and then instead of distance of one millimeter we'll do four millimeters and you can see how the whole thing thickens here and if i do an inspect i can measure from here to here and i can see that that distance is four millimeters now instead of one i'm going to show you one more way i usually don't you know like to show multiple ways of doing the same thing um, but in this case here it's, it's important um, I, can, I could have just gone back to that shell feature, if you recall, right click here on our timeline, go to edit feature. And instead of an inside thickness of one millimeter, I could just go there and make that four millimeters. And that would have given me a, uh, a four millimeter shell. So again, if I can inspect this by clicking on these two edges and I can see that that distance is four millimeters as well. This would actually be my preferred way to go. You know, I, uh, I would rather keep the timeline simple I'm doing it this way doesn't add an additional feature on the timeline and keeps that timeline more streamlined. Okay, let's go ahead and print this out and give it a shot. While printing, it began to detach from the brim on the corner here. I should have went a little more aggressive on that brim, but decided to keep the print going because if it survives, then it's really not going to affect the functionality of the part. Thank goodness it did survive. There's nothing worse than having a print 90% complete and then it just detaches from the build plate. Now here's a pro tip. You want to get yourself one of these deburring tools. I got this one from Amazon and it makes removing rafts really, really easy and very satisfying. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Now, it feels very strong here. I think the four millimeter thickness here really did the trick. And I can see here sliding into the little tabs that I've got a uh, good tension here. It's pressing up against the walls here and it's gonna hold it in place. And moving it up and down feels really smooth. It doesn't feel tight and it doesn't feel like it's gonna just fall off. So it seems to be working really good so far. Uh, let's try putting in the onion and the garlic here. And yeah, these aren't going anywhere. So they're locked in place, banged it up against that shelf a few times and it's not coming apart. So I'm gonna call this one a success. Oh, let's take a look at the top. And as you can see there, no more gap. So bringing that whole five millimeters back allowed the cover now to rest right against the edge of the shelf here. All right, so quick little home improvement project there, but yeah, it's still very satisfying. That whole process of just having a problem and then being able to design your way out of it, you know, using Fusion 360 to create the solution and then 3D print it and, you know, go through an iteration and then seeing what needs to be tweaked and then the final print and then that final feeling when things just like snap into place and it just, it just works and problem solved. So, you know, the journey if you've gone through it and you just know how extremely satisfying that is. I almost get excited when things break because, you know, I look forward to going through that journey. So. All right, if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll have more content like this. Uh, maybe even start like a home improvement series. Um, I don't know, I'll, I'll think about it. Don't, don't quote me on that. Uh, but if you're looking to get started with Fusion 360, uh, check out the link below to my quick start guide. 
I recently revamped it, so I've got some new tutorials to walk you through just to kind of get you going, especially in the beginning where it can be very frustrating. It's kind of why I made a quick start guide to sort of get going uh, without all the frustration that you're going to face to easily start making some models and then, you know, get going with the software. So check it out below uh, if you're looking to begin this journey of 3D modeling and 3D printing. And I'll see you next week.